Hey everyone, welcome back to this week's episode. I am so excited for today because I have a dear friend of mine. We've been on a journey together. You guys all know I love talking about awakenings. I love talking about the healing journey. And that's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis with people. And I end up really uh, just having a, a such a appreciation for the process of awakening, of going on a journey. But they can be really hard and they can be really painful. But the connection that I have with this woman that we get to hear from today is it's deep, it's profound. She is a dear friend of mine. We started working together many years ago. So please welcome Paulina. Hello, dear. Welcome to Hello. the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> you know, it's been a long time in in the waiting. I'm, I've been like, okay, Paulina, when are you ready to come have a deep soulful convo with me? And we've, we've, it's been a journey. We've had a lot in our lives that has happened over, you know, the last few years. Do you know, like when we go back to, I think it was what, four, almost seven years ago, I think when we started working together, maybe six years ago, seven years ago, a lot has happened in that time. So today I, I want to kind of, we're going to dig into a little bit of what, what's your journey been like, um, your healing journey, what, what, where were you when we first started working together, kind of some of the things that unfolded and we're just going to let people um, kind of see the, the awakening process that you have gone through because I find you very fascinating. You're strong, you're a force to be reckoned with. And you're super inspiring. So I'm excited for everybody to hear from you today. So um, let's kind of just start out with where things were at when, uh, when we first started working together. So I think we started in late 2016. Mm -hmm. And um, I think everything was meant to be how we met. I think that my journey could not have happened without you. and Or it would have been so different. So I'm super grateful. Um, I know you always say you love me. I love you more. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I think during that time I was married. I had been with my husband at the time for, we've been together like, I think 18 years, 19 years at that time. Four kids, um, working my butt off with real estate. My career is doing great, but I couldn't figure out how to get my marriage right. Even though we were together and everything looked great, we were even on a cover of this magazine for like City of Henderson. Really? <laughs> and yeah, and it's, I see that magazine, I still have it. And sometimes a clip will come up on my story and I'm like, God, that person was like so unhappy, but we kept it together. And I thought I was doing what I was supposed to do but I wasn't truly happy. And I went to you and I was like, okay, this is the one area of my life that I can't control or one of the main areas that I had no control over and I wanted to fix it. And you're like, okay, are you ready to go in this journey? And we did the program. I think you call it like in the mud or something. What is it called? Mm -hmm. Is it in the mud? Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's, yeah, the mud episode where, yep. In the oh, mud. that was one of the episodes of like 10. Yep. And so I started doing everything you told me, like everything. I'm like, I'm, because when I do something, like I go all in, right? So I was doing affirmations. I, that's the first time I ever did affirmations. I ends. I had my morning routine. I was envisioning this amazing relationship. And um, it was, it was a lot of work, but it, it made me feel like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the work. And then she hit the fan. <laughs> Like literally my, my son left to, for college and I, I was, I think we were like four or five months in and I was like, things aren't changing. They seem to be getting worse. And you're like, just keep doing the work, keep doing the affirmations. And I'm like, okay. And something started shifting. I think it was, um, okay, I'm doing what I can. I'm really putting in the work. If he's not meeting me halfway or if things don't start to change, then I know at least I tried my very hardest is what I kept telling myself. And then everything happened October, 2017. 
And um, do you want me to go into that? <laughs> the deeper wow. Thing? Okay. So, so with, um, with that, so when you were working on your marriage, because this happens so much, Paulina, this is such a gift to so many people listening because, you know, it can feel so painful when you are in a relationship and you're working with a coach, um, a guide, whatever person is there with you and they're telling you to do something and you're trying it and it's not working and it's not working. It's, it's like at that point you have, you got to weigh your options. It's like, what, what do I do here? Do I just give up and go back to my old life? That's an option, right? That's what a lot of people do actually. Another option would be to continue on that path and, um, and see what happens and to keep going. And that is what you did. How did that feel though? And how did you keep going? Like when you're saying affirmations and what were you saying? Were you saying I'm in a beautiful marriage? Like kind of give us an idea of like, what were you saying? What were you feeling? What were some of the challenges that you were experiencing? Because that was the biggest uh, pain spot for you at that time in your life, right? Was your marriage? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was doing all the things like literally, when I woke up, I'm like, I am in a beautiful marriage. Today's going to be a wonderful day. We're going to get along. We're going to see eye to eye. We're going to, the kids are going to see us happy. Like it's going to be a beautiful day. I would drink my coffee. I'm drinking it all in. Like I have the best marriage. We communicate great. We're honest. Um, we love each other. I had affirmations that I would write down. Like literally, I'm in a beautiful marriage. I'm in a beautiful marriage like 10 times. And then I would do a meditation for like two minutes, three minutes, whatever I had time for. And it was about like my relationships with your husband. And um, I started doing a lot of the work that you said, like, see his side of it. Like, don't go in the attack, a lot of stuff like that. And when you say going back, I, that's not who I am. That, that wasn't an option. But because I saw you on a weekly basis, I think right when I was about to like, be like, okay, this is BS, this isn't working, you will like, kind of wheel me back in. You're like, okay, Paulina, refocus. Like, tell me what's happening. Talk to me. And you would sometimes show me his side of it. And then sometimes um, you would be like, no, that's something you you probably kind of need to stand your ground on. Like, you're not wrong. Not that there's a right or a wrong, but you, in my past relationship, there was a lot of manipulation. And a lot of times I was second guessing myself a lot. And I'm like, am I going crazy? And I wasn't willing to go back because I was the the rose cl colored glasses were off and I was starting to see things very different and there was no way I was going to do that but it really did help that I had you weekly and I paid attention to like movies I was watching the music I was listening to um I would do even like night night uh, meditations or I would have like this little affirmation I would tell myself but it was obvious I was doing all this and all the kids saw it and he saw it. And a couple of times he was like, Oh, it's like you and you're like witchcraft. He would say little things like that. And I was like, uh, you say witch, like it's a bad thing. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, I'm putting intentions out there and I'm creating this life that I want, but it was kind of like a joke for him. And that really bothered me. But I, I just thought, okay, this is where he's at. And a lot of people probably think that, and that's not where I'm at. And I, I didn't want to hate him. But I started to like kind of see him differently. Um, and it wasn't like a hate. It was like, you're just, we're different and we're kind of going in different directions. I started feeling that tug. And then I was like, no, I'm going to make this work. <laughs> we're going to make this work no matter what. And so, because I'm hardheaded in that sense. And then everything happened October um, 1. And that kind of shifted me where it shook me up and, and I wasn't able to see things the same at all. Wow. Okay. So here's where, so here's what was happening. So you were going on this journey, you were trying to shift your marriage, you were becoming clearer, like you were seeing things you'd never seen before you were seeing with a clarity. And that can be painful, you guys, because, uh, because when you start to see things clear, and now it's like, once you see, you see, and now you can't go back to, 
you, you know that ignorance is bliss, right? You hear that term. <clears throat> and so, so then you've done this work and I remember asking you, well, what do you want? And you'd say, well, I want my marriage to work, right? So it's like, okay, let's go there then. And so we're, we're working towards that and it wasn't unfolding the way you wanted it to, or you thought it would unfold, right? Now you, now you see it differently. But <clears throat> so, um, so then October comes, so you've, you've been trying for, for months now, um, you're seeing more clear, you're getting more clear on what you want in your life. And then October hits. So give us the, the it's kind of like dominoes, right? Give us the, the story, the details of what occurred then. What was the first thing that occurred to open your mind and your eyes even more? Well, it was October 1st and what we call in Vegas one October. And I was at the shooting that happened um, for the country concert that we attended every year. It happened to be the year my daughter turned 21 and I brought her home from college. She goes, she was at the University of Oregon. So I brought her home for that weekend. We had this amazing weekend, three-day festival. Like, literally, we had a spa day. We had, like, a cabana day. We had a brunch day. And then we went to a concert every night. It was, like, the best weekend. We had friends come different days. And it was, like, the last singer is on stage. And all of a sudden, um, we hear shootings, you know, gunshots. And at first, we thought it was fireworks. And then everyone's still dancing and I remember like looking at the sky and I'm like there's no fireworks and I was like oh my god I think those are like gunshots and I think that if I my daughter wouldn't have been there I would have kept dancing too but I was with my daughter and it was a game changer because then I was like the mama bear kicks in and I was like a crazy person like I grabbed her and threw her on the ground everyone's like what are you doing I'm like those are gunshots they're like no they're not you're and all my friends are like Paulina and then all of a sudden you see a lot of people falling on the ground and then everybody just dropped on the ground and then we're like okay we can't sit here then it was like gay mode and we ended up getting out of there N none of my friends got shot so we all survived but it was like a 20 minute situation that was like something that I, I'll never explain it was out of body like I was watching myself do what I was doing and I was like in a game like a video game and I was like trying to jump over a fence and there was another fence falling in a trash can picking up my daughter like I dragged my daughter around like like a doll like I found this trailer and I'm like get underneath it she's like what and I like push her on the ground like I kick her like I'm a crazy person <laughs> and poor girl no it's so crazy oh. what I did to her but she listened she was like what am I what do I need to do and I'm calling my friends or police officers and I'm calling my, my, like my, my brother-in-law and everyone's like, okay, Paulina, do this, do that. And I'm like, okay. And, um, we get to the end of like, it's backside of the strip. And I was like, okay, we can like relax for a second. Cause we're like shaking. We have fallen. We have cuts. We're, we, we're a hot mess. And then this car pulls up to us and they, they bring out their finger. Like it's a gun and, and do noises. Like it's like they're shooting us. And it, at that moment, Karina's like five feet in front of me, the furthest we've been apart the whole time. And I was like, oh my God, this is it. Like, this is where we die. And I'm not next to her to like, cover her. Cause that's what I was doing most of the time was covering her. And uh, th they were just kids that happened to be driving by. I don't know what, what they were thinking. If they didn't even knew what was happening, but they were just, and they started laughing and I was like, oh my God. So then I was like, we're running until I see a police officer. Like we're literally running. So we're like running down behind MGM. So we get to UNLV, like Karina's like, oh, and I'm like, no, like we're, we're not going to stop. Like now I'm crazy. We're going to make it. We're going to live tonight. And at the end of the street was my brother-in-law. There was no other car there. And he happened to make it through like the barricades of the police. Like he got through and his one truck is right there. And I was like, how did he, how did he find this? There's thousands of people running like crazy. Everyone's trying to jump in his truck. It's crazy. So we got out of there and we get, he takes us home. First, we go to the hospital because my friends that were with us, their mother's a nurse, and we got split up. And then that was insane. You just see people everywhere, like bleeding. It was crazy. It was, and it, I was like, okay, it's time for us to go home. Like, we need to go home. This is, we've been through a lot. We walk in, and I remember looking at my husband at the time, and he now know, was knowing what was happening. And I had been calling, and he wasn't answering. And my daughter Athena was like did you see a bunch of dead people and I was so crazy at that moment I was like what are you talking about like like I was freaking out still and um 
he he told me, hey, what do you, don't talk like that to her. That was the first thing he said to me. And I remember thinking, like, do you know what we just been through? Like, like we were shaking still. I was still holding Karina because it was a lot for us. And that was the first moment that I realized that he like didn't have my back. I have, we, we both raised this family together. It was definitely a team effort, but for the most part, I, I, I took care of things and he didn't really ever have to like, take care of me. I took care of myself. And, um, that was like the beginning of, I think the end, that comment and that book and that whole week was kind of a, a blur. And there was a lot of things that happened during that week that I was like, who is this person that I'm married to? And uh, while everybody was coming over, everybody was like, how are you guys? Like everyone, like my dad came over. I remember that morning and he was like at my door when I woke up and he's crying and he's like, when are you going to stop scaring me? And he just comes and hugs me. And I was like, Oh my God, dad. Like I finally like let it out. And Karina, he's hugging us. And I was like, that's the hug I needed for my husband that I've been with for almost 20 years. And my dad gave it to me. And I was like, okay, like, Colleen, you're going to be okay. It took a while. It took, you know, a couple of weeks. I mean, still little things happen now, but we're okay. But like my sister, my sister dove in deep. She's like, okay, I'm going to get you every type of treatment you can put. She could put her hands on, like she can get her hands on. And it was traumatic. I, I never understood like PTSD and I get it now. Like that was, we had nightmares. I, I still won't go to a restaurant and have my back to the door. Uh, loud noises still kind of freak me out, but it took a while to get there. And my dog, I think because I had my daughter with me, it made it so much more intense. And I put her in that situation and I felt really bad for a long time for that. And um, so that's what happened October 1. <laughs> wow. Yeah. wow, wow, wow. Um, I remember talking to you. Um, I remember where I was. I was driving to a women's retreat that I was doing in Sedona and and talking to you on the phone right after that had all happened. Um, my goodness, I can't even imagine because you're such a protective. I mean, everybody's protective. You are such a mama bear. When I think about you, I think of mama bear. So um, I know that definitely was not... I, I laughed when you said you kicked her under the, <laughs> under the, uh, the trailer, because I can, I can imagine just like how you took the reins on that. Um, but what a, what a terrifying experience. So you now, and then your dad coming and you, you, wow, like what a beautiful moment. Like you're finally home to that safety, that protection that you needed. Um, so then what happened? So then my dad, he, my dad was sick. He had diabetes for like seven, eight years. He was on dialysis and he, um, he wasn't doing good. So he had like, he was having really bad, like, um, arm pain and they didn't know where it was coming from. He kept telling them that something was not right. And when he was doing dialysis, one of the days they rushed him to the hospital, they said that his, um, blood pressure was super, super high. So then, um, they couldn't figure out what it was they actually sent him home. And then like, I think it was like four or five days later, again, he wasn't doing good. I went to the emergency room. We actually went and I was like, dad, what's happening? He's like, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. They need to figure it out. <laughs> like my dad was super funny. And we sat there and we just kind of made, we just laughed for like two hours when he was sitting in the emergency room and they decided that they were going to keep him for, um, for more testing. And they, they send him up to the ICU. So the next day, it's like a Saturday. I have a theme at, at soccer practice. I'm across town and my mom's like, get over here right now. Like everybody needs to get to the hospital. And I was like, oh my God, my dad died. So we're like all running to the hospital. Basically we all run in and my dad's just cracking jokes. I'm like, what? I'm like, mom, we all were so mad at my mom. Like, why would he do this? Like we all thought my dad died. She's like, no, you don't understand what happened. He's like, I don't know what she's talking about. I'm like, really? So we all like kind of called in and canceled our day. And we were all there, all the kids, all the grandchildren. Everybody was in this room, like all day long. Cousins, aunts, everybody was there. 
all day we hung out together and we just joked with my dad. They kept running tests and they didn't know what was happening. They just kept saying his white blood cells just kept coming down. And they're like, it's getting really bad. And he would sleep and wake up and they would give him more tests. It was, we just hung out and it's like eight o'clock and they're like, okay, you guys have had 50 people here all day. This is ridiculous. <laughs> people have to go. And so everyone's like, okay, it's time to go. And I didn't want to leave and neither did my little sister. And my mom was definitely going to stay there. And I looked at her and I go, are you leaving? She was like, no. And I was like, I'm not leaving either. So everybody left. And like 15, 15 minutes into it, he's like, something's not right. He's like, Some, something like something is not okay. And I'm like, dad, you need to like relax. You're maybe you're making it worse because you're freaking yourself out. The nurse comes in. It was like a shift change. And I said, something's not okay. And she said, he's having an anxiety attack. And he's like, I can hear you. I don't have anxiety. I'm not having an anxiety attack. Something's not right. And then she's like, I'm going to get him something to calm him down. And she leaves the room. And all of a sudden, my dad's like, eyeballs start like literally popping out of his eyes. It was the craziest scene. And he's like sitting up and he's like, he starts calling my mom, Lupe. And he normally doesn't call like Lupe. And I was like, oh, shoot. She gets up and she starts hitting his chest. And I was like, what the hell is going on? So I called it like, I'm like nurse. And my mom jumps off my dad grabs the nurse. Like, I think she grabbed her by her shirt and like pulled her in the room. I was like, Oh my God. I'm like, dad, stop. Like what, what's going on? He's like, Oh, he said before she came in, she said, Paulina do something. And typically like the normal Paulina would have been like, I want to see the CEO, the president, the president of this hospital. Let's get somebody in here. Like what is happening with my dad? But I was still like recovering from, when October and I was like really nervous all the time still. And I was like, dad, you're freaking me out right now. And I, you're like making me feel like really uncomfortable because he was not acting like himself. And when the nurse came in and saw him, when my mom dragged her in, she took one look at him and she ran and pressed the code red and jumped on top of him and started giving him CPR. And then a bunch of security came in and they took me and my sister out and they put us in this room and I'm like, calling my sister. I'm like, you have to come back. My older sister, you have to come back. Something's not right. And they come in and this nurse says, okay, we need to get um, permission to stop compressions on your father. And I said, okay, just put him like on a machine until my older sister gets there. And she's like, no, your dad's dead. And I was like, what? My dad's 59 at the time. I was like, wait, what? I'm like, no, 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 this, this isn't happening. Like there's no freaking way my dad just passed away. Like, this isn't happening. My sister, I'm like, no, I'm not going to stop. They, I guess they have to get permission. They can't stop compressions. The first family there. So I'm like, can't wait till my sister gets here. And she got there like 10 minutes later. And she was like, everybody's like, like everybody left and only turned around and came back. Nobody could believe that this happened. So my dad passed away that night, like at nine o'clock. I think it was like nine eleven or something. And um, that was pretty bad too so that was like oh my god my dad just died how did this happen how did I not do anything it was a lot so that was 11 the 11th the 20 that was the 21st it was his birthday's 11 that was the 21st wow in October oh I'm so sorry that happened that was I, I don't even know what to say. That was, I mean, I've heard this before, but, and, and we haven't talked about this, like hearing this story for, um, how many years ago was this? This was in 2017. So it's been six years now. Yeah. We just went through all the anniversaries of everything. So I'm wow. very happy it's November. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <clears throat> okay. So you go through, you get through the whole funeral and yeah, and it's horrible. It's like one thing after the other, again, like, I'm like, Hey, I'm like hanging on by a string here, have my back. And it was like one event after the other one situation. Like I just wanted to be with my mom. I just wanted to be with my siblings. I just wanted them to, we just wanted to lay in bed with my mom, like literally like little kids. Mm -hmm. And I got stupid comments. Like, are you going to come home and cook dinner? Like, who's going to take the kids to school? And I'm like, 
I don't even know what day it is. Like I, I was going through so much mentally and I'm normally not like my, like I get things, I get things done and I was not okay. And he was nowhere to be seen. <laughs> like he wasn't around. It was the craziest thing. I don't, I don't know. He checked out when I checked out instead of like having my back for whatever reasons. I don't blame him now. I'm so grateful for everything that happened the way it did. And I hate to like talk about him like in a negative sense, especially on something like this, like a podcast. But um, there was a lot of things that happened that I I was like, really? Mm -hmm. 20 years later, like you, you don't have my back right now. And it was really hard. The funeral was really hard. I, I sat next to my siblings and he wasn't sitting next to me. Don't ask me why. I was like, where's my husband at like literally at the funeral I'm like shaking my head thinking I this is crazy mm -hmm. and we literally buried my dad um on the 30th and on the 31st I went home in the morning and when I walked the kids to school it's Halloween and I told them when we when I come back we need to have a talk and I just said that's it like it was over and he thought I was crazy. And I might have been a little crazy at that time. But at the same time, I never felt so much clarity. Like I knew that was it. It was, ever, it was over completely. And it was crazy because I was like, do you want to share an attorney? We can go to the same attorney. We, we could drive there together. Like there was no tears. There was nothing left at all. I think I cried one more time after that, like two years later. But I never, I felt like that was the end of what we had. And... There was no turning back at all. And it was so easy. Like literally we went to turning together. We went like 11 a.m. that day on Halloween. She said, come back at three o'clock and I'll have everything typed up and you guys could sign it off. We signed that day. She called me on November 9th and said, I've never seen this happen before, but it's already signed by a judge. We were divorced in nine days. That's unheard of. She's been an attorney for like 20 years ago. She's never seen this happen. And I was like, yeah, because it's supposed to be this easy because this part, is, this is the easy part. Like, it was crazy. Everyone thought it was, it was nuts. Wow. So even though I knew these things, like coming back full circle, um, it's, I don't even, I didn't even remember this. I didn't realize, I knew it all happened really fast. It was like, to me, I kind of look at what happened with you of like three dominoes. It's like the first one, but I didn't realize it all was in one okay. month, not even one day over, not even into November one day. So basically October 1st to October 31st. Is that yeah, right? Exactly that. Whoa. So October 1st, the shooting, then your father passes away, then you sign for divorce. So you literally have the conversation about divorce and then sign the papers that same day. Literally that same day. Whoa. Wow. Like it was nine o'clock, 11 o'clock, three o'clock. <laughs> Talking, wow. appointment with attorney, signing the papers at three o'clock. Like wow. it was crazy. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. So, so with that experience, um, I think this is so, it's so beautiful what you said of, I'm happy that this happened and it's not to blame him. It's not to blame, you know, you understand it now. And that's the thing is when you're in the thick of it, it's hard to see. It's hard to see what's around the corner, what's in the future for you. It's hard to see why any of this happened. What's the gift in it. But when you keep going, when you keep going, when you keep focusing on what you want, because that's what you did you focused on what you want and it felt like your whole world fell apart. But what was really happening is when we start to focus on what we want and start to just claim it, claim it. I am in a beautiful marriage. I am in a beautiful relationship. I am creating a life that honors me. Then it feels like a storm starts to break out and now it's like all hell breaks loose. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you have the courage to keep going instead of living a dull pain the rest of your life, which maybe you would have stayed in that. I don't know what would have happened, right? Mm -hmm. 
but having the courage to go through that storm and come out on the other side uh, is that's where it's at because it was falling apart for you and now you see that now you see what was around the corner so tell people um, what happened next what what was around the corner for you well it was it was a shit show for a while it was a lot of like you know the kids I felt they had to deal with a lot of stuff because of the separation and they still have to and that's the hardest part of it but I think I believe that in the big picture they'll appreciate that too um I had you know we have two sets of kids like you me and Jen live very similar lives. I had two kids when we were younger, and then we have two. We had two when we were um, older. Like my daughter is not wasn't Brian's um, biological daughter, and Andrew is not my biological son. And so one of the reasons that I I fought so long, so hard is because I really didn't want to break up that family and have them in a situation where they were going to have another group of parents. Um, I wanted them at least to be off to college and that's been a hard part because you know Karina and Brian he raised her and now they don't communicate and that that sucks and then Andrew you know I'm not his biological mother but I'm closer to him than ever and nothing's going to break that up not not a divorce nothing could, could do that regardless if we don't have the same blood People say that he looks more like me than my daughter's. <laughs> and he's not my son, <laughs> which well, is so funny. That's a soul family for you, honey. <laughs> and and then the little ones were angry. They're like, you know, our older siblings got our parents together and you we didn't. And there's been a lot that's had to happen for that. But the older kids are like, dang, finally you're divorcing. Like it's time. They're they're happy it happened. And so you can't. I think you can't stay together because of children, because like my situation, the older ones wish we would have got divorced sooner and the younger ones wish we would have stayed together and they'll never understand each other's story because they didn't live it. But I know my daughters now see me and they have to see how happy I am now. And if it took, you know, breaking up our family to get to this point, at least my daughters know now how important it is to choose when you choose your partner one. And if it's not working out because the other person is not willing to go on the journey with you to get better, to fix things, then you walk away. It's not easy, but you do that because you have this life and it, you have to make it amazing. And that's the space I'm in now. It was horrible. There's still things that are not great because of the kids. But besides that, like my dad passing away, I'm, I'm a real estate agent. My dad was my lender and um, Spanish speaking lender and I was looking for a lender and my I called one of my dad's colleagues and I said hey do you have somebody that I can work with that speaks Spanish because a lot of my clients are Spanish speakers and he's like I have a perfect guy for you and I was like great and I remembered him because he was at my dad's funeral in the back row and I was I was cleaning up like pamphlets or something and he was just sitting there crying and I was like, hey, are, are you okay? Like, it's my dad's funeral. And I'm like, because he was bawling. And he was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I loved your dad. Like, he was such a great man. And and I was like, oh, thank you. I, I love hearing that. And he popped in my head when I was looking for somebody to call to find a Spanish-speaking lender. And then um, he set up an appointment and he brought Johnny in. And that's how I met Johnny. And it's funny how things happen. I remember the moment I saw him and I was like, I wasn't like ready to get into a relationship, but um, it's been like a year since I got divorced and I, um, we started working together and then things evolved from there. <laughs> and then you started smooching. <laughs> <laughs> yep, started sure did. together and then you start <laughs> kissing. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wow. So the, the person at the funeral was not Johnny. It was the yeah. guy that set you up with Johnny as the lender. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, what a journey. 
What a journey that was. So, uh, so you've been with Johnny ever since, and now what's, what's going to happen here? <laughs> so last November. How long have you been with Johnny? We've been together five years now. Wow. And last November on Thanksgiving, he proposed when we went to Maui in front of my son and my daughter. It was really cute on a cliff. It was like perfect. And if I went back and read those books that I had in like 2017, where I was like my affirmations of like the perfect relationship, he nailed every single one of the things I was looking for. So I see people that are going through the divorce are like in the, the mud of it. And I'm always like, Hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> I, this might happen to you. You you have this idea of this person you wanted, and and you're you're putting it out there, and you're you're sad because of the failure you feel when you get divorced, especially as a mom. And and then something like beautiful happens, and it, everything just falls into place because I know with like no doubt in my mind that Johnny is a person I'm supposed to be with. He's my person, and if I fall, he is going to be there to catch me and the support and the connection that we have is I've never seen any anything like it I didn't think it was real so I affirmations work 100 mm. <laughs> percent <clears throat> so the one of the things that I've told you that I love so much about watching you and Johnny is you guys are so childlike you have so much fun together and you don't see that a lot with people, with couples that are adults. And especially, I mean, you can see it at the beginning of their relationship at times, certain couples. But you guys have been together now for five years. And you still joke and laugh and have these, you know, inside jokes and just this playfulness about you that I think is just so beautiful. And mm -hmm. I love that so much. And you're getting married in February. I am, and you're going to marry us. I am going to marry you. I am so excited. It's going to be so full circle, you know, because I remember a time where you were like, I don't know if I ever want to date again, right? I don't know if I ever want to go there again. And uh, I think it's really normal because we learn to not trust ourselves. We learn to go... Uh, well, if I could go there and be in that relationship for as long as I was, then what if I do that again? Definitely. Because we know you and I, we talk about relationships a lot, especially in the group, but um, a lot of people do do that. You leave one relationship and you end up in the same type of relationship, with the same person, mm -hmm. just a different name. And I, I was so scared. I was so scared. But then at the same time, I knew that I wouldn't do that because I've I've grown so much in the sense that I was aware of what I did, what I chose then, and I will not choose that again. And um, I don't know. I think maybe that just talking to you and the vibe, the the vibe group that we have, like having the conversations that we have, like even when you start to like maybe walk a little bit to the left where you need to come back, you, you pull us back in. There's something that, happens in the conversations in the group meetings that I'm like oh that's exactly what I needed to hear this week to be like okay Paulina get back in line like you're seeing that wrong so I that's why I think I love the group so much it's a it's a reminder a lot of the times mm -hmm. what Paulina is talking about is the awaken group that we have weekly and it's a group coaching so we're inviting anybody to come be a part of it we'll drop the I'll drop the uh, link in the show notes but I love that. Get back in line. Like I'm like, <laughs> I, I picture myself with like a, militant, <laughs> you know, a stick. Get back in line. You know, <laughs> that's um, me telling myself. <laughs> again. And, and you're so sweet. And nice <laughs> with if um, you did, you start laughing afterwards. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but, but yeah, like just that anchoring, we have these deep soulful conversations. Um, but what happens is, when you go on that journey and you do the work like you had the courage to do to light yourself up it's like you know when you come to planet earth you come from that that pure truth of who you really are like let's say that this is the other side of of you know the veil if you will 
and then um, you're born and you come into the planet and then you start to go on a journey and most people generally speaking get really far away from that truth the longer they're here the longer they go away from that light and that truth but then you know ideally if you're really living a fulfilled life and going and doing the work then you go on a journey to come back to that truth back to that light of who you really are and you turn the lights on it's like you think of like a big huge mansion right and you come home and it's completely dark and you turn a light on and so it's like you turn one light on and then imagine going on that journey of going through the whole mansion of turning lights on 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 and you can eventually light yourself back up and once the light comes on it doesn't go back out it stays on because once you learn once you remember you're not learning something new about yourself or changing into something magnificent you're coming home remembering your magnificence and once you remember that you know it's like once you learned how to walk you didn't forget how to walk once you learn how to talk you don't forget how to talk you just know it and it's just the way it is and that's what happens with the journey of awakening to remember your truth of who you really are and I remember us having those, those conversations and you being like Jen I'm afraid that I might make a wrong choice again and I was like honey you're different now things are different you have remembered your worth you've remembered your truth and so go go have fun honey go have fun go out there you know uh, fly and see what happens open up your heart to that possibility that you're calling in that that person that you have been co-creating with the divine for and calling in and I believe and I'm sure you possibly I'm sure you believe this that your dad brought Johnny to you I mean Absolutely. I believe that. And he gives me signs all the time. It's like, I'm like, okay, dad, I got you. You know, he has me like over and over. And when you, obviously the marriage thing was like my most important at that time and things change, I've evolved like, and you have new things that come up, but then you're not, you're not starting from start, start line. Now you come with this experiences and you, you know, more than anyone like what I've gone through my other journeys with other areas of my life especially like in friendships and that was a big part of it another really big part of that and um you learn to like protect your light and shine it and and you don't allow certain things in your life anymore because you don't want to dim that light and then you see people that are lit up too when you want to bring them along or somebody who needs your help you're like okay I can help you. You want to help people and you want to grow with people that are like-minded. And then all of a sudden you don't have like, life is hard. Like, you know, the world sh stuff happens. It's always happening. But when you have like the inside, like down, like, and you just see the beauty in life and you wake up and like, see, I want to see every like sunrise. I want to see every sunset. I want to have the best cup of coffee. I want to nicest glass of wine like the best workout like I want everything to be like amazing it, but what I can control and I I got to this point after like taking care of the like the shit show around me that I had to like almost drop and it, I feel I don't think I've ever been happier in my life and and with like Johnny like he's like right there with me about making everything like beautiful and like living our best life and so if you if you think that we're playful I think that I I think that we're, we're going to be like that forever mm -hmm. I think that I don't see that going away just getting stronger yeah it doesn't it. have to go away it doesn't yeah. have to um and and for those of you listening don't get us wrong. This isn't about perfection. It doesn't mean like, oh, you meet the Prince Charming and now everything, we, there's no challenges. We never fight. We never get upset with each other. That isn't what we're saying. We're not saying like, if you're comparing like, oh, I wish I had that. We're not saying that, you know, we're not saying that um, you meet that person that you're to be with. Like, I know I'm with the person I'm meant to be with. 
Is he a pain in the butt sometimes? Yes. <laughs> Am I? Yes. Am I a pain in the butt for him? Yes. Do we make wrong moves? Yes. You know, just like I'm sure you and Johnny have moments where you guys get frustrated with each other, you know? So we're not saying like compare yourself because I know that can be a painful um, place for people because they look at other people and they go, oh my gosh, my husband was rude to me this morning or he gets in bad moods or, you know, so everybody does, right? Mm -hmm. But we're talking about if you're in that relationship that is really not honoring you for whatever reason, whatever is happening, maybe you're growing significantly and your partner's not willing to grow. Maybe there's substance abuse, maybe there's cheating. I don't know, whatever your situation is. If it's painful for you and you want something more, you can have it and you deserve it. You have to have the courage to believe that. You have to have the courage to ask for what you want. A lot of people are scared to ask for what they want because they know that what's here right now is not it. And so right. when you're asking for what you want, you have to have the courage to look at where things are at now, which is a beautiful representation of what you just told us is, girl, you had to go through it. You know, you had to really, really go through it. Um, you pulled up that carpet to see like what's under here. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy and it wasn't pretty. And yes, like what you said, we definitely have our disagreements and, but there, it, there's no disrespect. We respect each other. And I think that's a really big, big deal. Um, and so even we, we do have disagreements for sure, but there, it's not this craziness that I was kind of used to. I think people get used to stuff. I, I'm just, I think that after doing all the work, I think a lot of it has to do with what I'll tolerate and what I won't in every relationship in my life. And once you say no, you're not going to tolerate certain things, they kind of go away. That's what's happened to me. And if they come up, they, you know, I'll have challenges or they'll present themselves and I'm going to nip it in the butt because I won't allow certain things anymore in any relationship in my life. So, but it takes work. It takes work. It takes honesty with yourself and with the other people. And it, it's, it's not like, I don't have rose colored glasses on even now. Those are gone. I want to see how things are and I'm going to call them out. Mm. And I think that's part of it when you, when you start like digging deep and trust me, I have faults and I, I do things wrong all the time still, but I call myself out on them. I know when I'm, I'm messing up and try to get back in line. <laughs> get back in line <laughs> so um so that's the thing too is like um like with the rose colored glasses i love that because you know there's 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 layers to this you know some of creating is looking at the shiny side because what you focus on does expand but what was happening with Paulina and uh, what was happening with her experience here is she was focusing on what she wanted and she, and as she focused on what she wanted in her first marriage, things started to, the divide started to get bigger and bigger and bigger, which tells you that that isn't your end game. That isn't that person that you are uh, meant to be with for the rest of your life, that there's something else there waiting for you. I believe, I totally believe that I've seen it over and over and over again, but the opposite has happened. So it could be that your folk, you're in the, your relationship with that person that you are to be with, and you are really focusing on things that are causing you pain and you're in a space of criticism. And so those are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you were to shift and start to focus on the things you love about your partner, then you will heal together and you can heal together and you can grow. And so, um, so when I start working with someone, I never know what's going to happen because I'm not in that relationship. It's not for me to say, I mean, I'll never sit in front of someone and say, you, you need to leave your, your partner. Cause that is, I don't know. I've, I'm not in that situation. 
I'm right. only seeing a small little window of the perspective. Um, but it really is simple. And that is, the answer is to focus on what you want and stay there and stay there, yeah. and stay there. Yeah. And even like you're saying that the focus, even with the amazing relationship I have now, there are times where I'll catch myself focusing on the, something that I don't like and it will, I'll start seeing it more and more and I'm like whoa Paulina don't pay not not to not pay attention to that but I say to myself how about you focus on something else that's positive because he's a human just like you and you're not 100% perfect so focus on what you love and let that one go mm -hmm. I really believe on the 80-20 rule like mm -hmm. that, that's just the rule I live by with everything in life and tell yeah. people what that 80-20 rule is I really believe that like you can't be, no one's going to fulfill you a hundred percent. You're the only one that could do that. Mm -hmm. If you get 80% from your partner, you are doing great. That 20% are things that you're going to have to say. We're all human. Nobody's perfect. I'm going to let that blow slide. That's it. Cause I can't stand myself hundred percent of the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Expecting somebody else to come perfectly is that, you know, this so true. So I, and I'm going to focus on the 80% because mm -hmm. he's got that, not the 20. And well, there's we things. have to give ourselves grace, right? We have to give ourselves grace, just like you said, um, where we have to forgive ourselves. So we got to forgive our partner too, for not being perfect, you know? For sure. No, I did something that I was not proud of myself like two days ago. And this morning it came up in my meditation. And I said that I'm going to give myself grace. I'm not going to repeat that again let it go Paulina mm -hmm. and I will let it go because it was making me like sad <laughs> and I'm like I'm human don't yeah. do it again end yeah. of story good um I always kind of chuckle a little bit when someone says I'm only getting married once and I always think to myself like because I know what most people mean when they I, say that I, is they're only going to be like the, they're in the right relationship and um, no matter what, they're going to make it work. And the reason I kind of chuckle to that is because I'm like, how do you know? Like, how do you know that um, that partner of yours is always going to do the, the absolute, like, how do you know what your journey is going to be like? You know what I mean? You never know. And I do believe divorce is an option. It was a major gift for me. And I know it was a major gift for you. And, um, and so, you know, we are raised in, I mean, I think it's getting definitely a lot more accepted, but a lot of people are, they have a lot of shame around divorce and a shame around uh, you know, moving on. I know I had so much pain and shame the day I went and signed the divorce papers at the court courthouse. I felt like, you know, looking at my two small children and I felt like I'd given up on, and I felt like I'd failed them. And that yeah. was really hard, really hard. Cause they were a newborn and a two, I had a two year old and a newborn. And I remember thinking, man, you guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I could not do better for you, but um, I love what your what you were saying because I think that you know our truly you know when you were saying that you get to have your kids see you happy and we all know people who have lived a miserable life together till they were old and then they died and um, that isn't what I think life is about. I think our number one priority is to show people what, I mean, if we can heal and we can live the best life possible, if we can live every day with joy and having the best cup of coffee, I made me think of when you were trying to find coffee at my house and you couldn't find it. <laughs> um, but <laughs> she's like, she wakes up before I wake up and she's like, where's that coffee? I can't find it. If I were coffee, where would I be? Um, but, but that's the thing is like, if we can live every day with joy, even going through hard things, if we can still have enjoyment and enjoy the journey, then we are giving our children such a gift. 
you know? And so if you're in a marriage or a relationship where you feel so much guilt when you think about going and getting a more fabulous life because it's just not working, maybe you've tried and tried and tried, and like Paulina, I commend you for trying because it's not about being flippant about it and being like, oh, this isn't perfect, I'm out. No, that isn't what it's about. You try, you give it your go, and you might be in a marriage that can totally look different, and it can be a completely different marriage with the same person. That's That was what my experience was. And, um, and so it can change, you know, it can, it can be, it can heal. But the, the point is to this whole podcast episode is to ask for what you really want to stay there, stay focused on that and have the courage to keep going. Even if it feels like your world is falling apart, keep moving forward until you get through that storm and come out on the other side. Absolutely, for sure. Stay the course, even if it's ugly and hard and horrible, because what's waiting on the other side could be like the most amazing life. I had, my yoga, I had yoga today and the teacher said that he just read that trees are the strongest during the fall when they're the leaves are changing. That's when the roots grow and get the strongest because the changing of the color and the releasing is the hardest on the tree. And I was like, oh my God, that is beautiful. Cause I think I'm a tree remember? So I was like, that's so true. <laughs> like, and I thought we're all connected so much. And that is so true. I think people hate, I remember I used to say all the time, I said this, this was my thing. I said, I hate change. I hate change. I hate change. Mm -hmm. And cause it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard, but it's so worth it when it, it when you learn and grow from the experience and an amazing life could be waiting right around the corner. Yep. And many people, many people will benefit mm -hmm. from anyone listening, having the courage to create a life they love. Because if you're happy, you're just think about yourself. If your parents are happy or they're miserable, does that affect you one way or the other? Yes, you want your parents to be happy. You want them to have a, a fabulous life. So think of that with your own children because so many parents do not think about that. They just think, it doesn't matter if I'm miserable. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna grin and bear and I want my kids to be happy. Well, they, it, it's an umbrella, you know what I mean? And so it's, if you want your children to be happy and to honor themselves or even thinking about them in the future, it's like when you have the courage and, and I know it's still hard and I know that you're still co-parenting, but thinking of your child fast forward when she's a grown woman or they are, you know, they're grown women um, and they're in a marriage, will you want them to feel like they have a choice? to go get the life that really honors them and they have that they're not in prison and they have to stay in something that doesn't honor them for the rest of their life. Never, never. Right. Yeah. So you've shown them, you've given them that gift and that's a, that's a powerful thing. So, um, I love it. I love talking about these, um, the, the journey and thank you for having the courage to be here and for, being vulnerable and telling us, you know, being able to look behind your walls and, and showing us, you know, what's happened in your, in a very vulnerable space in your life. That's, it's amazing. You're, you're so strong and you have really gone through a lot. What a year that was for you. My goodness, not just one year, but what a journey. Cause I know there've been many things that have happened since then. And having the courage to let go of people as, in general so that you can, you know, keep going. Um, what is your message? If I'm going to ask you, like, the last um, question I have for you is, what is your message to the world? If you could tell people anything, what would you say to them? You know that I was thinking about this, and I kept thinking of all these different things. I'm like, there's so much... I think that 
when you're happy, when you find joy in like life, even when the world is like falling apart around you, you can come back to yourself and make the best of it. And I, I don't I, I don't know how to get to this place besides saying like doing the things that make you happy and make you feel fulfilled and remind you what this big picture of life is about. So I'm more, most joyful at the times where I know that I'm happy and after I've done like my meditation, my morning routine, when I feel good, everything else that's happening, I'm like, okay, I can deal with this. I can deal with that. So taking care of yourself, I think that that's I, the best I could say is take care of yourself and then you'll be a better wife, sister, friend. But if you don't take care of yourself, it, none of it works. I think that would be my biggest message. And I think that's what I try to tell my daughters. Like you, you take care of you first and then everything else kind of falls in place. And sometimes it falls apart but at least you're put together and you get yourself back up. So taking care of yourself. I think that's my biggest message as a, as a person, as a woman, as a mother, especially as a mother, we give a lot for our kids in our home and our husbands. And I would say that that's probably it. Amen, sister. Amen. How are you going to give people a drink if your cup is empty? Absolutely. That's so, so true. Thank you for being here. I love you so much. And I, um, I think I love you more. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I, I just thank you. Thank you for being here. And to everyone else for being here during this uh, episode, awakenings are painful. They are, but they're worth it. They are worth it. So keep going and have the courage to go after what you deserve in your life. Thank so. you so much for having me. Yes. Mwah. Bye for now, everyone. <laughs>